G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to start our adventure into a brand new topic and one of the most important advancements in modern CPUs. These x86 CPUs that we're using are absolutely magic. But um, what we're going to start looking at today, uh, most people don't know I think. Most programmers don't know how to use this or if they've heard of it they're not quite sure uh, what it means. Um, this this new topic that we're looking at, I'm, I'm I'm being careful not to mention exactly what it is, just for uh, just to build the anticipation and excitement. You've probably got a pretty not pretty good idea what it is, but um, it's difficult to find concrete examples of how to use what we're going to go into, and it's 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 just hard to 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 learn yourself uh, all of the ins and outs of this new topic, but. Uh, I decided to make these tutorials in assembly and uh, eventually lead to this. So yeah, this is really the reason why I started making these tutorials in the first place. What we're going to start looking at is just incredibly powerful, really, and people don't know how to use it. It's, it's also something that um, human beings, for one reason or another, are extremely good at using, and optimizing compilers are terrible at using. So this is one of the uh, big advantages to hand coding assembly. Anyway, let's have a bit of an introduction. We'll have a bit of a reminisce first, and uh, we'll see if this can introduce the idea. Now you might remember a long time ago now, I think it was about a month or two ago, um, we made an algorithm called Zero Byte Array. And yeah, it, it worked some, some, somewhat like this. So we had RCX pointing to the top of a, an array filled up with bytes. I don't know what the values were. We'll just put question marks in there for the time being. And the idea was to um, point RCX to there and set that to zero. Then move RCX down um, to here and set the next one to zero. And we had these zeros here in AL, so AL equals zero. And we were saying pretty much just mov. Mov into memory wherever RCX is pointing a zero, and then increment RCX. And that's pretty much what we did. But we decided that that was a stupid way to do it. And we pulled a bit of a rabbit out of the hat, and we decided instead of using AL, why don't we use AX? As we know, AX actually equals uh, AH, and AL, it equals two bytes, so if, you, if we set them both to zero, then um, yeah, we should be able to get a, a considerable speed up. So this is actually what we ended up programming. Um, we pointed RCX to these two, these two bytes, and we copied AX in there, so zero, zero. Then, instead of incrementing RCX one, we incremented it two. So it was right there, and we copied two more bytes, zero, zero. And it was down here, whoops, next one down, down here, and we did the same thing, zero, zero, and eventually we did the last one, so zero, zero. And what we've effectively done is sped up our algorithm by two. Uh, it goes twice as quick if you use AX, it'll go twice as quick as if you just use AL. Um, pretty much twice as quick, I mean you can't guarantee these things, but pretty much twice as quick. So the instruction that was actually zeroing these um, bytes here in the array looked something like, I can't quite remember, I think it was pretty much exactly like um, word, ptr, rcx, and ax. And then underneath that we'd have something like, um, who cares what we had? Um, but the, the point is that we were doing two things. This single instruction just here, so one instruction, um, was doing two things. Okay, so this is really, really important and very, very interesting. Uh, a single instruction was working on multiple items of data. Now, you might well say, and quite rightly, why would you stop at AX? That's where we stopped. We stopped at AX. Um, just to make the uh, algorithm simple, I think it was pretty early days. But why would you stop at AX? Why not use EAX and zero four bytes at once? So we know that AX is just zero, zero, two bytes. 
and we also know that EAX happens to be one, two, three, four bytes long. It's a D word. So if we were using EAX, let's just have a bit of a demonstration of how it would look. Um, these would all be like this, pretty much. Okay, so our array is filled up with question marks. We don't know or care what's there. And um, the instruction mov uh, d word p t r r c x and e a x is going to move four zeros into our array at once. One, two, three, four. And after that, we'd have to increment r c x by four. So it'd be pointing down here. And then we can go one, two, three, four. And this right here, if we were doing this, we didn't happen to do this in our example, but if we did this, it would be twice as quick as using AX. And it would be four times as quick as using AL. This single instruction just here uh, can work on four pieces of data at once. And logically, the next step is, why would you stop at EAX? We're using 64-bit CPUs here. Why not use RAX? And the answer is, uh, that's exactly what you'd do. So RAX, as we know, is 8 bytes long. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if we just move RCX back to the top again, get a bit of an idea of how quickly that would zero something out. Well, we know that the single instruction MOV uh, Q word P T R R C X and R A X is going to go bang and zero this entire 8-byte array at once. Smash. The whole thing would be zeroed at once and this line just here would zero the array at double the speed that E A X could possibly do it. It would do it at four times the speed that AX could do it, and it would do it at a staggering eight times the speed of AL. That's an 800% speed up, and it's a really good idea. If we actually had to zero a byte array, this is probably what we'd do. Okay, so what are we talking about here? We're talking about single instructions. This is a single instruction working on multiple data. So in this particular, in this final example, we had one instruction working on eight pieces of data. And if we just go over the page, I want to write down something very, very cool. S I M D. single instruction multiple data my friends that's what we were doing and it turns out that this is so important an idea that um, dozens of new registers have been added to our beautiful little 64-bit CPUs and literally hundreds of new instructions have been added so the instructions that we've been through so far the uh, regular x86 instruction set is uh, pretty powerful we've seen a few things that it can do but these SIMD extensions that we're going to start going into are amazingly powerful. So very, very fast. So the idea is pretty much exactly what we went through on the other page. Um, you store something. So say we've got a register just here. You store four values in it, we'll say, for example. We'll use the register MMO. This happens to be one of MMX's uh, registers and it can hold four values at once if the values are words and you store another four values so mm1 as our other register you could store another four values in there so maybe this is um, one six four and two maybe this is nine eight seven and one and then with a single instruction you can add the two together this is not actually the instruction mnemonic but MMO MM1 will result in MMO having um, 10, 14, 11, and 3. Just like that. It's going to add them all together to their uh, corresponding um, words and store the answer in MMO. 
So what we were doing before with our simple little zero byte array, that's fine for zeroing a byte array, but if you tried to add two things together, so say we had eight bytes in RAX and eight bytes in RBX, and we tried something like add RAX, RBX, uh, it would usually work. We'd usually get um, eight bytes, the answers, in uh, RAX, but there would be a problem if um, one of those bytes happened to be close to uh, the top of a byte, so say something like 255 plus 4 uh, equals 259, we know that that's what it equals, but that's not the answer that it's going to store in uh, RAX. So the regular x86 add instruction is just not clever enough to uh, know that we're using RAX to be uh, 8 bytes and RBX to be 8 bytes, it just doesn't know, it uses it as a single 64-bit value. But these extra uh, registers over here in MMX that we're going to start looking at soon, uh, they do know, and the instructions know. So we sort of say, um, add these two together and pretend that they're four words each. Or we can say, add these two together and pretend that they're eight bytes each. That way we can perform eight additions with a single instruction. Or maybe we're using, um, say, D words, and they're not 4 or 8, instead it's actually 2 D words. Okay, so we could add 2 D words at once, we could add 4 words at once, or we could add 8 bytes at once. And, um, yeah, store the answer. So, that's pretty much what SIMD is. And, next tutorial, uh, we're going to start looking at a real SIMD instruction set, and that's uh, MMX. It was introduced in 1997 by Intel. And it's amazing, really. It's really cool. There was talk of um, getting rid of MMX for the modern CPUs, but I, I really hope that they don't, because it's, uh, it's very, very fast and very easy to use. And it might have been superseded largely by SSE, but um, I like it. Anyway, um, we can do that next shoot. So thank you for listening. See ya.